entertainer and reggae star Bob Marley, Rita Marley, and the manager of the whalers Don Taylor are now patients in the university hospital after receiving gunshot wounds during a shooting incident which took place at Marley's home at 56 Hope Road tonight. Today, the true story that inspired Marlon James' vivid novel seems almost as hyper-real. The 1976 assassination attempt on the reggae legend was assumed to be politically motivated, coming two days before a concert backed by the Jamaican Prime Minister, Michael Manley. The book imagines what happened to the gangsters who got away. Killing Marley was and is so preposterous. There is an unwritten rule in Jamaica that nobody touches a tough, a tough gang. So the idea that not only would somebody even think about killing him, but try to, and nearly did, if Marley was inhaling instead of exhaling, that bullet would have gone straight through his heart. So they were trying to kill him, not just scare him. So that's why it became such a, a sort of a, a larger than life event, and why it became something that, especially a novelist who's trying to write a big novel, it just kept unfolding. But how much of this comes from your own experience, your own culture and rumors that you heard? Oh, you heard all of it is rumor. All of it. Yeah, in Jamaica, you trust rumors, you don't trust facts. Facts come with an agenda. Rumors, nobody, you know, whoever is telling it don't really have much to lose. Do you think Bob Marley was dangerous? Yes. He was very dangerous on all sorts of levels. He was dangerous in, the, in, a, very, in a very basic way. The, the idea in 1976 that you would get poor Jamaicans to start thinking for themselves in itself was dangerous. In my grandmother's house, there, are paint, there were photos of the prime minister and the prime minister's father. There are no family photos. That's how far the sort of political culture is ingrained. And the idea that this guy with this, you know, uncombed here, speaking terribly, um, becoming this voice of freedom and black struggle, a lot of Jamaicans were very uncomfortable with that. The, 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 we would love to say that we are on the forefront of accepting Bob Marley as a revolutionary. We were actually one of the last to accept that. And it wasn't until the rest of the world was like Bob Marley freedom fighter, we're like, yay. But he was a really polarizing figure, and I think people forget that. Plenty of people, even in the middle of sufferation, go and pick the bad they know over the good they can only dream about. Because who dream but madman and fool? Sometimes war stops because you forget why you fight. Why do you write in a patois that is different from your speaking voice? This novel could only work if you throw it to the characters and let the characters tell it. There is a tendency, certainly when you're certainly raised from a, in a former British colony, the idea of what is proper English becomes an obsession. And it's one of the things that runs through the book where people keep, characters keep criticizing other characters' English, even though nobody speaks this sort of perfect English, whatever that is. It's just one of those things that just screams former British colony. We just have this sort of, um, it's a great way to separate classes in Jamaica. It's a great way to, to say you are not one of us because you don't speak as properly as we do. In a bold coming out article in the New York Times earlier this year, James described growing up around Jamaica's notoriously homophobic culture and why he had to get out. You've written about being taunted as a boy. How did they treat you as a boy? I went to an all boys school. So a lot of it is just school culture. You go to an all boys school, you have to keep proving yourself. So being the sort of um, gay batty man, I don't know if you can say that, um, being considered that is, was um, pretty, pretty traumatic. It's, it's, um, nobody wants to be rejected at school. It's the exact, exact point in your life when you want acceptance. But don't you hate that yardy culture, that the macho-ness of it? You see, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's too complicated for that, because right in the middle of this macho culture is a whole Shibada culture, which is these really flamboyant gay guys who sometimes wear makeup and bleach their skin and have extensions, and they're right in the middle of the ghetto because they know that you mess with me, I'll shoot you. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's right in there. So even in there, there are these, these contradictions. And I think it's, it's, it's too complicated to just hate it, but it's too complicated to just love it. You kind of do both at the same time. 
Why is there so much violence in your writing? I'm not sure. I, I certainly write a lot of it. And I certainly also believe violence should be violent. What do you mean violence should be violent? I mean, Meaning that if you're going to write a, story, a scene with violence, people should be horrified at it. I didn't experience any violence at all, but it's something you kept hearing about. It's something, well, it's, it's the thing that happened over there. I'm still, as a writer, guided by the things that I'm haunted by. And I think I am haunted by that, even though I never really experienced it.